Okay, so now that we know we're using Mapbox and we kind of talked about just briefly some of the reasons why we might want to use it or, or just some of the, the possibilities of maybe not using it, um, what, what is Mapbox? So what are we going to be talking about when we're talking about Mapbox? Uh, let's go into this, okay. So I, I call this the Mapbox explosion because I, I think that Mapbox is going to grow greatly in popularity. The only possible reason for it not to would be its pricing model, which is a little bit uh, it's a little bit painful if you do have a map go viral. But at a low level, where you're just creating maps for your own projects or for relatively small websites, Mapbox really amps up the game in terms of making beautiful maps. Uh, but it also requires a lot of knowledge. It's got a very steep learning curve, and that's partly why I felt like it was necessary to make this course. I saw there was no courses on this, and I personally, I'm a mapping guy, and I had a hard time really, really understanding the different depth of Mapbox, and probably even a few things in this course I'll revise over time because they do change a lot, and there's a lot of complexity to, to the management of data and uh, the kind of code that is built into Mapbox. So... Um, Mapbox has been around for quite a while, but I think they've been growing in popularity lately, and I think it's going to increase. Um, Mapbox kind of sits on a line between just a simple map interface or a simple map API like, like Google Maps or, or Leaflet, and between like a whole tile data management suite, which is more like an Esri or ArcGIS. Now, if those terms don't mean a lot to you, that's okay. I'm just kind of separating out that that Mapbox is really a full suite of, um, of editing for a map. And it's almost, a, it's a lot more than just displaying a map. It handles a lot more than that. And I think its strongest strengths, as I mentioned in the last video, are when it comes to large data sets, complex data sets, or data sets you need to update and, ma and maintain regularly, and that it would be nice to have multiple people maintaining. Um, and also when you want to visualize those in a very a very nice way that can be dynamic and custom. So if I have like a huge number of polygons uh, displaying some kind of information, I, I recently I had a project where I had to I had to plot driving distances from a location, like 30 minutes, a, a polygon that represented how far you could possibly go in any direction in 30 minutes. Now, that's a pretty cool little piece of data, and I wanted to visualize it in quite a, a nice way, and I had thousands of them to show. So with something like that, Mapbox is really the ideal solution because that's a huge amount of data. We can style it in a really beautiful way. And also it's going to optimize some of the, the, the data display so the map won't show, it won't slow down uh, hugely. It's just an example. Um, but yeah, so Mapbox, it also does, because it, it is so much uh, a full suite, it also very tightly manages how you have to manage your data flow. So, you know, you can't really step a lot outside of Mapbox's processes if you're going to use their their suite for it. Um, that being said, Mapbox GLJS itself is something that can work even without Mapbox because you can just give it um, your own custom tile layers and that kind of stuff. Again, don't get overwhelmed if this is... Uh, kind of confusing. So more for people that, that know, just in, if you know what I'm talking about, this is for you. <laughs> if not, don't worry about it. It's not something you have to know. Uh, but you can use Mapbox GLJS kind of as its own standalone unit. You don't have to use it in, co in coordination with the whole studio. Uh, so we're going to be going over things like styles, data sets, tile sets, even just signing up for Mapbox and logging in and, and getting familiar with the interface. So we're going to go through all that, but I kind of wanted to go over like, what is Mapbox and, and why would we use it 